Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This is, uh, well, as I promised everybody, my answers video to, um, if you saw, I announced on here on on, uh, on YouTube and also I I put, you know, asking people for questions uh, on my social medias such as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. a few responses really really awesome so i just want to say a nice uh, so say thank you to those that actually did participate um yeah and uh, so now i'm going to answer those questions i mean i don't think it's going to be a massively long video but uh it kind of depends of how um how complex some of these quest these questions are um and it might take me a bit to kind of wrap my brains and think about it Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it. So this is my Ask Me Anything Q&A response video. Okay, so the first question is from Simon Seiko Roberts. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Seiko Roberts. Uh, basically, so Simon's question was asking me what am I looking at getting from the Transformers Siege line? So, that is the first question. So, all these questions are going to just, I'm going to pop up a bit of editing magic, I'm going to pop them up so you can read them um, as they were uh, as they were posted. My answer to that is, well, I actually own a couple of the Siege line. Um, I own Hound, Optimus, and Megatron and uh, Sideswipe um, at the moment and um, I'm not looking at getting loads of them because I generally don't have the space for like a whole line but um, I do like the look of the new uh, Jetfire that that's coming out um, I also like the look of um, <coughs> excuse me I also like the look of um, uh, Shockwave. So I would probably say Jetfire and Shockwave are probably on my radar at the moment. So they're the two I can think of top of my head so far. Okay, so the next question is from a good friend Julia. Um, or Jay Hannah, she's known on YouTube. Check the description below for a link. She is an amazing musician um, on YouTube. Really, really awesome. And uh, she asked me a question, mainly a TF Nation related question, saying what are your top three things you are looking to maybe do for, at TF Nation 2019? Um, well, at the moment, I don't want to sound like a broken record because I have mentioned this a few times, um, but it's a little bit 50-50 whether I'm actually going to be able to make it this year, but... To answer your question fairly, if I do happen to be able to make it, uh, I really hope I can make it. Um, if I do happen to be able to come, then basically the, the three things I always enjoy doing is meeting the guests, meeting you guys, the people that go there, the, the, the attendees, um, you know, so the, basically the guests and my fellow friends and people that I've met off YouTube and so on. Always love to do those two things. And the third thing is simply just to have fun and forget about the world outside and just escape for a couple of days. And that's pretty much the three things. Um, to maybe add an extra bit to that, there is a couple of panels that I'm looking forward to that have already been announced. Um, there's one, I think, on the Friday, some point in the Friday afternoon. Um, that looks sounds pretty interesting. And apparently it's a, you can't record in there. It's like... You have to be there to actually see what's been said. Um, and there's strict no recording allowed. So that's kind of intriguing me quite a lot. So that is certainly something on the Friday so far that I want to meet. And obviously Greg Berger and uh, obviously Peter Spellos. You know, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. So the next question is from John Grieve. And uh, he asks me, what are my plans for my channel? So, do I have any plans for my channel? So, not 
off, not off the top of my head, I don't know. Um, not off the top of my head. Uh, I pretty much, when it, when it comes to my YouTube channels, I play things by ear. I just, I upload when I want to upload. I've got no structural change planned, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just sticking to, I'm just sticking to still make make videos for those that are subscribed um and just keep making videos that is my plan i pl I hope i plan to hope to continue that um but as for plans i've got no plans to really do any changes to my channel at this moment in time um i mean literally youtube for me is literally just a hobby at the end of the day and i don't really invest myself that much into my channel i should do but i don't really invest myself in that kind of way of planning ahead um i don't script um i edit when needed and necessary but um i don't script my videos and i don't and i just simply just press press play and uh, hope for the best, um, edit when needed and necessary, and then just put it up. And that's simply how I do about go about YouTube. But uh, so yeah. But anyway, so thank you very much, John, for the question. Um, we'll just see. I just, like I said, I just play things by ear. I, I mean, I'm. I just hope that I will still be here in the very few. You know, nothing major bad happens to me like health wise and that, and I can still start. I can still bring you videos. I mean, I love doing it. Um, if I didn't, I, w I would have stopped a long time ago because I've been doing videos now for over ten years. Because uh, I started way back in two thousand and six, two thousand and seven time. And uh, so I've been well over 10 years now, about nearly 12 years since I started doing these videos. Um, obviously, it was on a, a channel before this one when I started properly. And then obviously that one's no longer available. So I deleted that one and became TF Nosey. And I carried on from there. Um, but the only change that has happened is that I deleted, I got rid of my Nosy Anime Guide channel, which was about anime and things like that, and manga, Japanese animation. That is the only thing that is not, is, will not be happening anymore on a separate channel. So that is the only change um, I can say regards to my channels. Um, so that is kaput. I deleted that because it wasn't going anywhere. But I may consider to bring back you could consider this a plan, probably in the future. I do consider to bring my anime videos to my TF Nosey channel under a separate playlist. But anyway, we'll just see things, see how it goes. So, let's move on. Next question is by Bill Harrison. And he asks the question, if, if I could control Rewind, what would I do? Um, or what would be my choices? Well... I'm kind of thinking rewind you on about the YouTube we rewind the uh, where all the really the top YouTubers and everything kind of uh, take over the the network and do these weird wacky things on their channels and so on. Um, personally, I don't really deal with that stuff, but I know it's a question. It's just a hypothetical type thing. But if I was to that standard of a YouTuber where I had thousands, if not millions, of subscribers. What would I do if I got, was given the opportunity to, you know, you know, to 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 control rewind? Well, I don't know to be honest. I really don't know how to answer that one because it's hard to really think of. <laughs> it's hard for me to think of me at that level because I haven't actually. I don't think I'll ever will be at that level. And to be honest, I'm quite content with not being at that level. Um, I'm quite happy with being a 300 subscribed to the channel as I am already. But for the sake of the question, um, to be honest, apparently Rewind this year or last year, should, last year, sorry, or whenever it was, the latest one apparently was an utter shambles. So I think, I don't know to be honest, because I don't know that many creators. Um, I don't know that many creators, to be honest, to really kind of formulate what I would do. But I would probably 
put on if I controlled rewind, I probably could put on a massive metal metal gig, metal concert with like all the top notch metal artists in the world, and uh, probably be, I don't know somehow do something like that and control YouTube with just this big metal fest metal concert or something, and then probably uh, invite all my fellow friends that I've been friends with for years on YouTube to, to take part in it if they are into that kind of music. Um, and then just have this big massive party for like a full 24 hours or 48 hours or so of just nothing but metal music, live metal music with great friends. That's all I can really think off the top of my head at the moment, but thank you very much for that, Bill. Uh, my good friend Richard sent me a, me uh, a question on Facebook. Um, he asked me a question of what anime or manga would you would you like to see get given a major live action adaption? Um, this is obviously because Elite Battle Angel is currently out at the moment and uh, it's doing really really well with fans of the manga and general audiences uh, alike, and it's doing really well. And uh, so yeah, so what anime manga series? Or movie would I like to see made into a live action? Uh, thank you very much to Bista Yeti, Richard. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, let me. Oh, that's better. Um, let me think. We've already had Death Note. Um, we had obviously a couple of Japanese, about two or three Japanese movies, like back in the early thousands. Um, then they did a, a live action series. In Japan, but I I don't know how well that did. Then obviously there's the American remake of Death Note, Netflix's version, which is inf inf just crap. Um, obviously our Ghost in the Shell already. We've got a Cowboy Bebop apparently. I don't know, I think it's a ser live action series coming to Netflix. I think that's been greenlit. So that's something about Cowboy Bebop live action is happening. I would love to see. I don't know how you would. I don't know how you would tackle it because it is a very very difficult f movie to understand. the The story is really quite complex, and a lot of people that have watched this film just do not understand what the hell is going on with it. But yet they still love it, and that would be Akira. Akira is a infamous, infamously well-known. Whether you whether you're a fan of the franchise or not, many people know of this series uh, of that movie. Sorry, and uh, it it just is a the art style and the depiction and how that film comes over is like nothing I've ever seen before. And uh, it really was a big. It, it really, it, well, it still is a staple of Japanese animation even now. Um, and I would love to see how they would be able to tackle such a complex movie such as Akira, and bring it into the live action spec as a live action live action Hollywood movie, or whether to do it in Japan, make it a full Japanese cast because it is all Japanese uh, uh, characters in a dystopia type deal Tokyo um, another one I would like to see um, well we've had Bleach as well we've had a live action Bleach film which is great um, I would like him to attempt another Dragon Ball movie in the future um, but do it properly do it justice follow the actual story as intended by Akira Toriyama. Um, that would be good as well. Another one. I'd like a live action movie. Or a possible series. Maybe it might work better as a, as a, as a series. Live action series. And there's a, there's a manga. There's a manga series. That's been out for a while. And it's, it's finished. It's all wrapped and finished. But there's a. Um, there is a there's a manga series by the by the people that created Death Note, and uh, the same people made a a manga called Bakuman, yeah Bakuman, and it's about two young kids that are high school, 
uh, in high school and they were big fans of manga and anime and uh, they kind of meet each other really weirdly he you know the the main character well one of them is an incredible artist and the other guy is a really gifted writer who loves writing you know, writing and everything they both come together and they create their own manga stuff and uh, it shows you the inner workings of what it's like in the industry and how stressful and how hard it is to compete with other rivals and other manga artists and mangakas or whatever and uh, it really is a very insightful and incredible read and if nobody's checked out Bakuman or if you've never heard of it go and check it out it is incredible um, the art is brilliant and how it's really cleverly bringing how the industry works behind the scenes and how stressful it is and how heartbreaking it can be and how much you um sacrifice in order to to, to make the, your manga and create all these things it really goes into all that really nicely and it's really good and it's it's a comedy as well so it's a comedy slice of life romance because there's a bit of romance in there with the, one of the main characters uh, but at the same time it's kind of talking about how, how hard it is in the industry and it, flipping really brilliant i'd love a live action version of that um is there anything else before i sign off to the next question um i'm just trying to remember what i've seen that's really really good that i'd love to see a live action um let me think you think 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 I would probably. No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, actually, I'd like to see a live action movie for Gangster. If no one's heard of Gangster, it's a, it's a series that came out about 2016, 2017. And uh, it's basically about these two men that are gangsters, obviously. And uh, they pretty much, one of them is known as a tag, and he's actually, um, he's actually deaf, and he's, he's known, he's, he's kind of identified as a tag, and he's got like a samurai sword and everything, uh, and he's pretty much, kind of, they, they, they both kind of go around, and they've got contracts with like certain gangs, gangster gang, mem, uh, gangs and things, and they're kind of like, dispose of a lot of the assholes and horrible people where that where where they are and the kind of well they assassinate people and kill people um so they're kind of like contract killers really uh but it's really i know that that's been done to death but i would like to see how they would handle a a character that is deaf but yet he's an incredibly gifted strong character that is really good at handling a sword and he's really great at combat um and how they would handle that in hollywood without making it too ridiculous uh because you know i'd love to see that because you don't see many characters that are kind of like an anti-hero that have a disability such as being deaf or or well you've you've had blind in the past but you i haven't really noticed noticed it about anyone that was deaf um so i'd like to see how they would handle gangster as a live action movie possibly in the future but anyway thank you rich for that and uh, let's move on so this next question is by Stu is by Stu mccall and uh, basically he asked a question of have you considered on doing top 10 lists on your tf nosy channel on your channel now so that's an easy question for me to answer because yes I have I've done a couple of them actually um I've done a top I think I've done I think I've done yeah I've done top 10 favorite transformers series I think or top 5 series I've done I've done a couple of top 5s and maybe a top 10 I've done many but I have done them in the past um and I do intend to hopefully maybe do more in the future um, I do like doing those kind of videos where they're kind of this like a trivia type thing and they do have a good way of transcending and kind of getting a bit of a conversation going. Um, 
in a good way, not on a bad way. Um, they're, they're a good way to kind of get people think, oh, you know, you know. The thing is about top tens, you can look at them in both ways. Some people kind of do top ten lists, and they purposely put the kind of say my top ten worst characters. And uh, they put all the really popular ones in there, or really well-known characters in there, just to kind of trigger people on purpose, and kind of spark a negative response, just for a comedy effect, really. Um, there's quite a lot of that on YouTube, but with me, it's just honest opinion and my honest choices and picks for those lists. Um, if you've not seen them, Stu, go back on my go back on my videos on my on my TF Nosey channel. There is a couple that you can watch if you've not seen them, but I do intend on doing more in the future. But thank you very much for that, Stu. Cheers. And the next question is from my obviously from Sam from Triple Zero Five Star Nine Eighty Nine. Basically, he asked me, has YouTube over the past ten years helped you? So as, as it helps you, I don't know what he means by helps me, but basically it's an interesting question he brings up because like like I said, the answering to John, John Grieve, uh, basically I said that I've been around for quite a while. Me and Sam have both been around about the same time on YouTube. Um, I mean, my, my first YouTube channel I made, well, I generally did it basically back in 2006 time. Because you had to have a YouTube channel. Um, back then you had to have a YouTube channel in order to actually comment on people's videos and to get involved. So I just kind of made a YouTube channel just in order to communicate with people. And, uh, and then basically over time I then saw other people making videos about Transformers and nostalgic stuff being uploaded. And uh, it kind of got me wanting to do my own stuff so <clears throat> over the 10 years answering Sam's question I think to a point it has because there has been a lot of ups and downs uh, basically kind of mistakes that I've made over the years that uh, <clears throat> I have <clears throat> excuse me I have learnt from and I continue to make videos Regardless of what people's opinion of me is, and I always stick to my own way of doing videos, and I don't stray off that. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't adopt a persona in order to get views and subscribers. I'm a very honest person, and some people don't like honest. People think honest is boring. That's their opinion. They're entitled to it, but end of the day I am me I'm honest I've always been an honest person and I don't intend to change anytime soon um, and I think for me is that there has been a lot of ups and downs there's been problems with me with me in depression and anxiety having problems with uh, so there's been a couple of times where I've said that I'm going to quit YouTube a couple of times because I'm, I, I don't know my head was in a bad place at that time and that happened a couple of times over the over this t t journey of me doing videos, and uh, but that that's life, you know. Life likes to chuck crap, ch chuck the the kitchen sink, the front door, the back door, you, don't, you know, everything. Just chuck it at your face, and then you've just got to try and either deal with it or move out the way of it, and then just move on with your life. I don't know, but it's. You know, like everything, life, you know, you, you, you progress, you learn a bit more. I, I mean, to be honest, my videos haven't really changed all that much. I mean, I've, I'm probably a little bit more... Um, YouTube's probably helped me more in the ways of communicating with people, expressing myself more, uh, being a little bit more that way. Um, I've when I started off making YouTube, I kind of did the whole f um, hands kind of thing. Um, I was one of the. I started off as a hand reviewer, and I was behind the camera, and all you could hear is me talking in the background and me showing you whatever it was f with my hands. And 
I still have massive insecurities about my appearance, how I sound, my my voice. I think I sound like a like I'm not hit puberty. I honestly don't think. No, obviously, I have, but I just I just generally think for for a guy my age, I just think I've got a really quite a horrible, crappy voice, and my appearance. I've got a problem with how I look as well, and uh, so. Basically, when I started out, all those insecurities, I was really, really petrified, pretty much, of putting myself out there. Because I was petrified and scared of how people would probably see me as. But I was really surprised, and I was welcomed into the Transformers fandom, so to speak. And uh, and uh, the rest is history. And I think it's helped me express myself, helped me to be a better person... Um, learn from past mistakes and move on and not to do things to upset people and things like that just generally I think that's what YouTube's shown me and helped me to accomplish and also through making YouTube videos I've made some great friends as well that hopefully I will never lose contact with but hopefully not but I've made some great friendships as well as um, with me making my YouTube videos, so it's all fantastic. But anyway, thank you very much, Sam, for that. And that is it. That is all the questions that I was sent in. Um, I I have gone. I, I don't, well, basically, uh, every every question I got, I took a screen cap of it. So, but I've not had any since. I did ask uh, on Thursday evening. I asked if anyone want anyone that hadn't. To come forward but I didn't get any more responses so there we go that is the response that I got so thank you to uh, Jehan, Julia thank you to Rich um, Richard uh, Bisto Yeti thanks to Stu thanks to uh, John Grieve and to Sam and to everybody that got involved thank you ever so much for getting involved you are all awesome uh, those that didn't get involved Fine, no hard feelings. Not everybody's into the whole Q and A thing, and to be honest with you, some people just don't want to be involved in my videos. Simple as. Uh, but I'm not going to take that as a bad thing. I just think some people just generally don't want to be involved in anything that I'm doing. I mean, that's just that's life. Uh, you can't please everybody. You just uh, got to move forward and do what you think is right, and do what you think do you know think you know do what is best for you and that's all you can do but anyway so thank you ever so much again to those people and i hope you enjoyed the uh ask me anything my very first ask me anything q a video answers video um i may do one of these again in the future but i'll give enough space and time in, in between the, this one and, ne and the next one but then uh, but i will see you again very soon on youtube on this channel um subscribe comment and rate for more videos from myself and uh, by all means, share my stuff as well. That's also cool. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.